that's one of the things we talk about in our very first course. We talk about de jure segregation and de facto segregation because a lot of people be like, oh, there's no segregation anymore, but there is de facto segregation. And it may even feed into why the traditional education program isn't as diverse because when we don't have experiences with people who have different identities, they're, you know, our, even in 2021, our culture still, there's still this like schema for what it means to be black or what it means to be white or what it means to be Muslim or what, whatever that is. And if you don't have direct experience, it's hard to, um, I shouldn't say it's hard, but it's definitely a little bit more of a challenge to like, to break through that. The initial fear was that our TCNJ students would not want to be in an urban ed program. Urban is often used as a proxy for children who are poor or children who are black and brown. It's not just urban because urban has like a, a negative connotation to it and it's like urban is just a place like it's just an area saying like rural suburban like urban like when you think of urban you think of like all the negative stigmas that come behind it. There was this talk about how will we get students, how will we get TCNJ students who are largely, you know, white middle class students who are from New Jersey, not necessarily from urban areas, how will we get them to do this program? And the initial idea was make it an honors program because TCNJ students love honors, right? So if we make it an honors program, then we'll get them. But what we wound up doing was making it a five-year program that culminates in a master's degree. What happens at the end is not only do you get the master's degree, which does hold some prestige, but you are much more qualified because you get an, an additional certification in English as a second language. ESL needs to be taught to every single teacher. I think ESL should be a requirement for all educated, because you never know when you're gonna be in a classroom and you have one child that doesn't speak English. Just like special ed needs to be taught to every single teacher. Like you need to be able to be well-rounded for each possible student that you may have. A lot of people don't even have any training in ESL and they're going to be having students who need ESL support. I think there's a misconception that if you're teaching just elementary ed in like a suburban environment, you'll never come in contact with someone who's like not like white, straight, like cis, all these things. And I think urban ed and special ed really prepares you to, even if it's just one student, to help them in ways that you might have not have thought to do that before. And it also just like combats your implicit biases and really forces you to like question yourself. There may be a, a decent number of white students who came from very monocultural white backgrounds who think that's not for me. It is, it's for everybody. But I think we, just by calling it the urban ed program, we also create the possibility that some people think that's not for me. It was a culture shock in a way because it was, you know, I hear some people say like, oh, TCNJ is diverse. I'm like, 70, 30 is diverse? Like, diverse to me is like 20, 20, 20, you know, every, everything's at, everybody has a piece of a pie, but it's like, you, it's very noticeable when you walk into a classroom, you know? You get to see the diversity side of TCNJ when you join like certain multicultural like orgs or clubs or, or things like that, but in a classroom, like, you could tell who the major, majority is and not just white but higher middle class. I did a research on do TCNJ students uh, form relationships outside of their socio status, right? Socio, what's it called? Socioeconomic status, right? And then learning that TCNJ uh, median household income is over a hundred thousand. So that makes sense because you see the cars around campus like these people got, you know, they got a little bit of money. So they're not that I'm not only the only Latina in the room, I'm the brokest in the room. <laughs> The way we district in New Jersey creates a lot of segregation. New Jersey has more than 600 school districts. And the history of creating those districts is like, I don't want my kids to go to school with your kids, and so I'm gonna draw this little circle, and we're gonna have this borough that's gonna be a district, right? So the history of the districting is grounded in a certain amount of systemic racism. What's happened in some of these smaller districts that want to consolidate is both districts 
fight and say, you know, this is going to be worse for our kids and they're trying to take resources away from this and resources away from that. You know, some people would argue it is racism, but they'll they package it in a different way that resources are going to be taken away or, you know, um, your children are going to suffer by this consolidation. But that maintains segregation in a really big way. I mean, think about it. Like, why couldn't Trenton, Ewing, Hamilton, why couldn't that be one district? What do you think the Hamilton parents would say or the Princeton parents or the Lawrence parents if all of a sudden it was one big regional district that included Trenton? That would be a fight. Thank you. Yeah, it was my birthday yesterday. Nice to meet you. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, I'm an Aries baby too. Nice, oh, yeah. yeah. I, uh, well, it makes sense because I'm a very passionate soul. So, Aww. so our, our traditional education program Quite honestly, it just doesn't have the space. We don't have the core space to include these foundational pieces, like what it, what is happening in the world, what's happening, what's happened historically with like policy and movements that have impacted um, education and classrooms and children's development and health policy. Like we talk about how all of those things are interconnected and bi-directional and really try to have our students have a clear understanding of not just how to be a great teacher because that's important of course, like the pedagogical piece, being content area experts, but also like how they fit into the system and how they might be able to create change in the system. A lot of the Cl uh, the classes that we take specifically for urban ed should be open for all education majors. Like I remember taking multicultural children's literature. I was like that, that in itself should be in all classrooms. All future educators should be able to learn about diversity and inclusion in the classroom. It shouldn't be specifically for urban ed teachers. And I was kind of looking at the kind of like diversity and like types of families that were in the like town itself and like surrounding towns. And most of it is either like I'm focusing on African American authors and part of the reason is is because they're they have the ability to tell the story. Are like, there a lot of like like they think like, me and like a solid no. like white Thai and my son's Thai and we never kind of like I get in a book. You know, you get a social justice education in, in urban ed that other teachers and other students here like aren't necessarily getting. Like being exposed to the complexities and the injustices of the school system, it's been really interesting and it has like piqued my interest because I am somebody who likes to, you know, let, let's open this up and look at it as what it is and, um, you know, not sugarcoat it. Let's expose it. And so that's been like, great like for me to be able to do that actively within like my work and within my teaching philosophy. I always knew I kind of wanted to be an educator but specifically for urban areas um, necessarily be like the teachers that I grew up with that like inspired me. We also do a lot of like in-depth critical self-reflection. We do a lot of identity work. We talk about the hard topics. We talk about implicit bias and prejudice and systemic racism and you know and we deal with that head on. They force me to think, which not all of my classes force me to do that, and they really make me question like my reasoning for becoming an urban ed teacher, um, like my personal experiences and how they may have affected me different from other people. I remember having this conversation with somebody who was white, and she was like, like oh, like I don't like how she was just saying how it's like, she's like yeah, like. People just do urban ed because, like that pity that I mentioned, like oh, trans like some third world country or something like that. Um, that mentality, and it's like, like you gotta check yourself, you know? Like, do you really want the social justice? Do you really like care? Some days, you know, they're having a great day and they're not anxious and they're, you know, they're happy and and other days they come in and they're checked out the second they walk through the door, and so. I have to say to myself, okay, like you have to prioritize, you know, what they need first, because obviously they're having a rough time. Maybe something's wrong at home. Maybe um, just mental health day is bad, or they're worried about something. So I'm gonna do what I can to like make sure that their basic needs are met before I try to push this academic content on them. I would always think of teaching as more like the academic part of it. Like your goal is to 
get students through the curriculum, um, get them through being able to get into the next grade and succeed there. And I think that's still obviously part of it, but I think I had never really thought about or just like specifically looked at the fact that you also need to have like a relationship with the children and be able to help them outside of just like math class. And that can be done through like social emotional learning, like meditation, all these things that just like creates trust between you and your student. And I think that part of teaching I had like probably known about because I had teachers who I like loved and like really cared about, but I never really like specifically thought how to do that. And now I feel like I'm equipped with those resources and things to do to make sure my students feel like welcomed. What we want is to, to fill schools with people with that orientation who are like, we are, this is not good enough. We're not just gonna get through the day. Um, we're gonna push and make things better for all kids. When I say all kids, I really mean all kids because some of our graduates don't go teach in Trenton or Newark or Jersey City. Some of them go teach in Summit. Some of them teach in Hillsborough. That's important too, right? Like we need people talking about equity and social justice and diversity and inclusion in every school, right? That's not just like special for, you know, quote unquote, urban areas. Based on like the experiences I have had in urban environments and in classrooms in general, I've just like really enjoyed the kids and I think that would probably be what gets me through and keeps me in there. Being in touch with so many of our alum, I think a lot of what we're doing is working and that is we have teachers who are they are committed to staying they are they expect there to be discomfort and they're they're okay with that they know they can work through it um, so they're not necessarily leaving the field I'm not gonna quit now I'm already like 75% there so <laughs> TCNJ prepares you so well like when I compare my education to like some of my friends educations who went to different schools and different teaching programs I'm like, wow, like they really set us up for success here. 